Hey, do you need wallpaper? Go to wallpaperboulevard.com. Give them my name, tell them Spencer Colgan sent you, and they'll be sure to give you 10% off at checkout. Check it out, tell them I said hello. They have a tremendous selection. Don't shop anywhere else until you've checked out www.wallpaperboulevard.com. This is Spencer Colgan, and welcome back to my wallpaper and painting channel. Today, we're doing something that is not that easy to do. Take a look behind me. Do you see in the middle of your screen those vertical lines? In the center of your screen, you can see the shadows created by the hills on the vertical seams of the sheetrock. In fact, the customer has placed vertical pieces of tape to show where they want the walls to be brought to normal. So this is, this is a decent finishing job. It's decent, it, it needs to be, it's not finished. Although the builder has presented this as finished, but it's up to the customer to, to uh, make it a punch list item. So how do you fix this? This is something that most people accept. On commercial projects, this is generally the norm, okay? And because this is a flat finish paint on here, this is not as bad as it would look with something glossy, even a semi-gloss. If you put semi-gloss on here, you would show these off pretty bad. Here's how it looks coming in. The fact that this room has tunneled light so we don't have a big open space here with light shining on this. We have a shadow here, see this, created by this wall. And these vertical uh, seams are highlighted at different levels of exaggeration throughout the day as the sunlight in the room changes. At night, you would probably see this the least. So how do we fix it? Can you fix it? So the way to go about fixing this is to identify the lows. You're not getting rid of the highs. That's a high. You're not getting rid of the high. What's happening here is you have a high in the center of your screen and on each side of it is a low. It's a hump. If you notice on this side of the high, right there, that dark spot is a shadow cast by the high. That is a vertical high. If you consider the effects of a mountain on the land behind it, when the sun is in front of the mountain, you'll see a dark shadow cast by the mountain blocking the light. Well, because the light is there, well, you could really see it there, can't you? Right on the edge of my tool is the high. And on, on your left, you can see the dark shadow cast by the high. Now that we know what's happening, all we have to do is figure out where our low is. That is not a low. That's a low.
that's a low. See that? You see my finger under there? But you don't see it there because we come back high. That's a high. My straight edge blade is hitting the highs and it's revealing the low. All you have to do is isolate the low and fill it in. That's how you fix this. So in order to fix this, I need to remember where are my highs. So with a pencil mark, with my straight edge in place, I identify the highs. Why? Because I want to know where I should concentrate my mud. I have to come up there. That's more than an eighth of an inch. That's more than an eighth of an inch. So I've identified the boundaries in between which I will apply my mud. That's one. You can see that the sheetrock is true. To the right of the issues we just discussed is a completely flat surface. No reveals there. But let's move forward. Let's find the other end of this sheetrock. Because it's going to be every four feet. Okay, I can see it in my mirror. I mean in my, my camera. Here we are, right here. Okay, and you can see that we're good on the left, good on the right. But in between, we need to apply mud. And so I'm going to make my mark here and here. And what does that mean? I don't want to go beyond these marks because I'll raise it up. It's more work. It's unnecessary, you know. Also, you want to take note of how much thickness you need for the, for the mud. You don't want to be applying too much, okay? So you might want to, you might have a dip, a real dip, something excessive. This is minimum. You know what I mean? Like if you were seeing a space that thick, you want to make a note of it. Like 3 16 7 inch, you need to know how much to apply. And that's, it's not easy to measure, but it's, it's more than your, your slightest amount. You'll, you'll get to know how much mud to apply when it dries. Okay? And we're going to, just gonna do the same going down the wall, okay? My mud is very soft. Okay, you want it soft because you'll spend less energy struggling with very stiff mud. So that's where we're at right here. Okay, I'm gonna roll it on here. And I'm gonna stay in my boundaries that I've drawn with my pencil. I have a spray bottle with me. You don't want your edges drying. It causes highs. You start building up where you don't want to build up. And you want to stay in your boundaries because you don't need to go outside of them. So, 
let's show you how thick I put it on. We know all I need is an eighth of an inch, but I put, that's a quarter of an inch there, but we're gonna bring it down. And the rails, I call them rails. On each side is a rail that's going to ride up against my blade, preventing it from going any deeper. Therefore, in the center, it'll be just what I need. I wanna wet my edges down. They've been on the wall two minutes. Believe it or not, that exposure gets them to dry and then it brings junk in the mud. Wet it down. Okay. I got a six inch taping knife with me to get the excess off. Okay. It looks like I need a little more mud. I'm getting some lows. I've created some lows. So I'll show you. Let's see. It's soft enough that I shouldn't be pulling it anywhere. So I'm gonna, unless it's smooth, I'm going to fill this in, okay? So I'm gonna just extend it, apply another layer. Okay, so I applied my other layer. Screeding it. Okay. Keep a wet rag nearby because this gets messy.
<sighs> okay. Now. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's bring you up close. We are practically done. Practically. That was my excess, which I dumped off to the side. When you're working up there, you don't want to be delaying. You don't want any rocks in here. I had pulled a rock. Probably couldn't see it by your view. But I've raised that up an eighth of an inch. Now, two other things you have to know. The pressure and the angle. In order to apply compound and not take it off. The angle at which you place the blade is crucial. Let's go to a neutral area. If I hold my blade like this, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm, not, I'm, I'm wasting my time with a big tool like this. When you're using something this big, you want to have, you want to get your bang for your buck. So this will take it off. And there's a lot of weight to be holding on to it just to take compound off. You may as well go to a 10 inch knife. But when you're using a tool like this, to put it on, you need to be at a 45 degree angle. When you first put it on, when you first smear it, you want to be down 20 degrees, 20 degrees, okay? But when you're doing your final pass, you want to raise it up to about a 45. See, this is 90, and half of that's 45. That's your finish stroke angle, okay? 45. You don't want to be going lower, you're leaving too much on. Remember, you have to go against the highs and you're looking to take the right amount off. Now, pressure. Let me show you the difference of pressure. Here's a little pressure. Watch this. That's a little pressure at, at angle X. And this is a lot of pressure at angle X. Same angle. Same angle. See the difference? Let's do it again. 20 degree angle. That's a little pressure. Same angle, lots of pressure. The angle and the pressure result in more or less compound on the wall. If I put too much pressure, I take too much off. If I put too little pressure, I leave too much on. You'll know when you get to your job. You'll know. Just keep in mind, it's an issue that affects the outcome. I'm going to move on to them. You know how to do this. All you got to do this is a couple of times and you will become an expert at it. The more times you do it, you'll become better than I am at it. For the next one, I want to point out the importance of going to your pencil mark. You don't go thin over here. That's where I need to put compound. 
Don't go thin. Your blade will feather it out beyond it. Make it nice and thin. But you'll see that you'll have waves unless you go to the edge. Okay, this is about an hour and a half after we began. I did the other side of the wall without videotaping it, so, so just so you know, that's why it's wet over there. This is the result of the first layer. I don't think we'll be applying a second one. Uh, the telltale sign will be when we paint it, or prime it, I should say. We'll get to see if there's any humps left that we have to deal with. All we're doing now, if this dries, all we're going to do is lightly sand the edges. We're not taking any of this down. So the second phase of this job is just as important as the first. Putting enough on, and then the second phase, avoiding taking too much off by sanding it. You don't want to be taking this off because the blade tells the truth. The blade knows how much to screed off of the wall. And that's why you drag it against the wall, against the rails, the humps. That tells you how much should be left. So when you sand it, you're going to sand it with a very fine sanding disc and light pressure, light pressure. When you've determined that you have a good level by using your straight edge again, you paint it and then you let your eyes do the rest. Are there any humps? If not, paint it the final color and you're good to go. That's how you fix this stuff. Okay, this is about four and a half hours after the application of the columns of compound that we did earlier in the video. You see how it's nice and flat here? We don't want to touch it. This is what we want to touch. Now, if you're brand new at this and you just happen to be good at the procedure employed in this video, like skimming and using that trowel or derby, then by all means, here, here's, do what I'm doing now. Sand the edges, and then we're going to paint it, and then we're going to polish it with a smooth layer of compound. But if you're not that good at this, here's what I want you to do. Prime it right now. Prime it. Get the paint on it, create the shell, that's going to prevent this. See that? When you prime it, you're going to put a shell on it. It's going to protect it. On top of your primer coat, after letting it dry for six hours, you'll have a hard shell. I suggest you do acrylic. Then skim these edges and then skim out any imperfections like this. Here's the problem. If you're new at this, you're going to over sand it. You're going to take too much off. But you'll save a step if you do what I tell you. Just do the edges. Just do the edges. Okay? I'm going to get rid of the edges so I don't have to compound them later on. Okay? So if you're good at it, Sand the edges. If you're not that good at it, prime this and then fill this in again, since your strong point is using the skim coat. Okay?
So I took down the edges so that when I polish it, I'm just putting a light skim on it. I'm not raising the level of the wall. And guess what, folks? I think we're going to be good here. I think we're going to be good. We'll know when we paint it. Once we get paint on this, we'll be able to see if we're raised up at all. And ultimately, of course, if we put our... Ultimately, of course, if we put our straight edge on it, we'll be able to know for sure. So I figured, let me try one of the one of the bays or columns that I did. So here's where we begin. Here's where the column ends. Sixty-fourth of an inch gap, if that. Very happy with that. Very happy with it. Hmm, I like it. I like it. Okay, the next day and the last day, we take, we go back to our conventional taping knife and hawk and apply the mud just to now unite all of the repaired areas. And we're not raising the level. Uh, we're just filling in the ridges. See that? I don't want to be sanding this. I'll fill this in with a skim coat and then sand it all with the sander as one full wall space. Okay? We're now joining all of the, all of the repaired areas together. Okay. This is still wet but fairly, fairly smooth. We'll give it a light sanding and then we'll prime it. And then the primer will tell us, especially with this light, on whether or not I have succeeded in accomplishing the removal of the humps, the vertical humps created by the uh, drywall finishers. Just a note on how much mud you should be putting on. I wouldn't roll on any more than this. It's just enough to do this, look. Up and down. Three feet or so, that's it. If you go too thin, you'll get this and it'll dry on you like it happened to somebody I know. Now we're going to prime the wall with one, two, three. With this roller sleeve, okay? I think it's one of the best. I got a good feel for it. I like the way it flows up and down the wall. I like the way it lays out the paint. I love this for all my finishes. Even though I'm priming it, I want the best for the people I'm working for. And so I buy the best. 
so I'm in the process of putting my second coat of Zinser 123 on these walls. This is the second coat. Okay, why two coats? Do you want shadows? Do you want flashing on your wall? I may not get it with one coat, but I might get flashing with one coat. But I'm not going to get it with two coats. So why take the chance, right? Give it two coats. It's only going to take you another few minutes when you really add it up. Okay? And so I'm expecting beautiful results. This is saturating that plaster coat that I put on. And when I say plaster coat, I put multiple layers, right? I did three coats. And so now I'm putting two coats of primer on it to seal this and penetrate it and to make it white for the new paint. So this is day three of this wall repair. Not that it took three days, but it happens to be the third day on which I'm working on the wall, among other things in this condo. So I saw some imperfections. So when you have a YouTube video channel and you do this for a living and you love what you do and you're getting paid good money to do it, you have to render, you never want to use the word perfection because somebody might actually hold you to that word. But you want to render excellence. And so I went around looking up close and I saw some areas that needed more touch-up patching. And so I went to my dry decks. I'm done with the nine inch orbital sander, etc., etc. So I sanded down my, my repairs again. And then I primed them. Now I will prime it with two coats. You don't want hot spots. There's too much light here to be making mistakes at this stage of the investment. This is an investment of your time and talent. And so you want to render it to the best of your ability. But if you look and compare this point of the video to the beginning, and this isn't even painted yet, we got rid of those vertical seams. Okay. Okay, so here we are. We just hit it with the second coat of paint on day three. It's it is after well you can see the sun hasn't gone down yet, but it's casting shadows from this wall right here, obviously. But that's our final product. I'll go backwards and you can see that the vertical seams have been eliminated. Eliminated. I mean, even, even though it's get, I mean, even, even though it's getting dark, you can, th that's a pretty good indication right there of what getting dark, you can, th that's a pretty good indication right there of what we're.